Marx's remarks before some, somebody, because somebody believed in the contribution made to the success of ETA is just as equal. This trust he earned, this trust that Mr. Hamduk earned over the years, is believed to have contributed for his success in his leadership position. As the old saying goes, humility and power together lead to the successful leadership. From top to the lower level staff in the commission, they testify that Mr. Hamduk's humbleness. His selfless is demonstrated in many, many ways. He never demands to get attention, neither he strives to be known. His silence explodes through his good deeds. For example, when Mr. Hamduk's driver was in an accident, Mr. Hamduk rode at the back of the ambulance to the hospital. At the hospital, Mr. Hamduk insisted to stay on until the family arrived to ensure that the news is broken through compassion. Mr. Amduk, I also would like to recognize your tireless effort to make ECA work visible in the host country. Your representation role in many for us has made the organization more noble and further attracted respect from member states and support from partners in development. Your dedicated pursuit of the AU ECA agenda, top agenda with the former executive secretaries has also opened an opportunity for us to meet our siblings on the other side to join hands and address Africa's agenda. I recall during my terms as a staff representative in the past and your role as a member of the senior management, we together have achieved many achievements where you always found a balance between the benefit of the few versus the very benefit of the continent. If you allow me, I would like to cite some few among the many. <clears throat> the review of the host country agreement, which I hope you would see achieved soon, as it has a big impact in the location assessment of the shared service for the GSDM implementation. The smooth process of the one-time staff conversion to permanent and continuing appointment, ensuring all eligible staff were not left out. I can assure you, those of you who are converted, Mr. Hamduk made sure that each staff list was in that list and nobody eligible was left out. The battle on the reclassification of the duty station, which still stands. The dollar paid of the GS salary, which we all are enjoying now. The reduction of the number of staff, the GTAF to a regular staff. The establishment of the Office of the Staff Legal Assistant Post to empower staff with equal arms before the law. The attitude which you live today will be the cornerstone of, the, of what you will become tomorrow. And I believe you are leaving ECA with great sense of achievement. However, and I conclude here, it is a universal truth we all have to face whether we want to or not, everything eventually ends. As much as we look forward, the day we achieve and say this is it for me, it always feels unfair to depart from the one who lives a whole like you. Mr. Hamduk, your legacy and good deeds will follow you. Hence, with utmost respect and humbleness, I would like to wish you all the best in your endeavor. And I am grateful she was not ready. She said she was not ready. So, um, is Charles a call in the room? No. Joa Tamansa? CDD? <laughs> Do I have to take up my jacket and put it on? I don't know. Anyway, um, I was just called in to say a few words about uh, Mr. or Dr. Hamduk, as they say, this uh, Sudanese say Hamduk. Am I correct? Rather than when we call say Hamduk. But you know, I met uh, Mr. Hamduk um, during the AU summit. I, I recollected 
to correct, it's 2006, in Banjul. In Banjul, that's where we met. And then we met again in another summit in the one and only beautiful place in Africa, Accra. <laughs> and uh, that was the great debate. But little did I know that he was going to come again to ECA to be my boss. And uh, he joined the Regional Integration Division. And uh, recently I was telling friends that, you know, there are a lot of us who are writing high and talking about the continental free trade area and saying how much we've achieved a lot as ECA and all that. But you probably don't know that Mr. Hamdok had a hand in it. Because it was at this time when we were in, um, in um, Enrid or, no, is it Enrid? I can't remember, Trade or Enrid, that we did the concept paper and prepared the note on the intra-African trade, which in my opinion, and please don't shoot me, <laughs> it is the best area that we've done, area four is this thick. And it was true that, that we brought the ambassadors. You remember that? We brought the ambassadors here and did a talk with them. And I do remember very well, the Senegalese ambassador, the ambassador Kebi, said, this is so important that we should take it to the summit for discussion. You remember that? And it was that summit, and if anyone, but tonight is not here, but anybody who, is, who was here at that time, will know that the, the summit with them, and I do remember very well, the Senegalese ambassador, the ambassador Kebi, said, this is so important that we should take it to the summit for discussion. You remember that? And it was that summit, and if anyone, but tonight is not here, but anybody who, is, who was here at that time, we know that the, the summit, which was uh, 2012, January, was a tough one. We had Mele Zenawi, we had Jonathan, we had Motorika. Uh, I cannot remember the one from um, the north. But anyway, most of them were speaking against the, the need to have a continental free trade area, including the late Meles. But it was Motorika. You remember, the former director of trade who stole the show. But when we left the place, we never knew whether this uh, decision would be passed in favor of this. You may remember, always I'm left behind deep in the night to be the shuttle diplomacy in AU. Because AU, I stayed there more than I stay in ECA. And I, I think there was a time that you and others were saying that the AU should pay my salary. <laughs> but anyway, we were there throughout the night. Nobody knew with our good friend, Mr. Moincha. And when I phoned and told you that it's going to be carried, and it was carried. And it was because of that that today we are enjoying that we have a free trade area for um, uh, Africa. And we just need to work hard to have the 22. But anyway, there are many things I could say. PIDA, the North, uh, the SADC uh, Commerce, um, what do you call it, uh, EAC, the tripartite arrangement, when Lusaka, we've been in many trenches together. But I want to share one with you, which I, was sh I shared with others. You know how we went to Libya. And when you go to Libya for a summit, you can get to Tripoli, but you don't know how you'll get to sit. Okay? So you go, you have a hotel, they put you in Tripoli, and every morning you carry your bag, you go to the airport and you don't know. It might fly, it may not fly, then you go back. So then the flight comes in, no manifest, no name, no passport information, you just go into the plane and then it flies you. So God forbid, if it comes down, my mother would not know that I'm dead. <laughs> so we get there. And everyone who knows uh, in Tripoli, it's a very difficult place. And a difficult summit we had, we went there and they were saying, down with ECA, down with ECA. But you know, it was because of the Blair Commission. They got confused between the Blair Commission and <laughs> Economic Commission for Africa. But anyway, that's a different story. But anyway, the interesting part of our journey to sit was after, you know, you don't want to stay there for long because you don't have a plane, you don't know when it's going to take you back to Tripoli. So we rented a car to go. 
not knowing the driver we had was a drug addict. Every two seconds, the guy had to stop. I was with Mr. Jadi in one car and Mr. Hamdok and uh, uh, Zadi in another car. Every two seconds, the guy would take us through off the road and then go into a mosque or whatever and come back. Eventually, we made it to tri Tripoli. Then he picked up a fight with our good friend. He wanted to beat him up. <laughs> but that's a different story. But anyway, we are very happy that, I'm very happy that you are going. You know why? I'm happy because there's nobody now going to tell me that I have bad economic thoughts. <laughs> because every time I pick on you and I tell you that there's only one thing, we need good economists. We don't need developmental state or left or right, just good economics. And mine is good economics, I don't know about you. But now that you are gone, nobody's going to tell me that. But, we're going to, but at the same time, we wish you all the best. You've been very good to me. Uh, you've been good to many people. Um, mine, I know I'll see you. So I'm not going to cry now, but I know I'll see you many times from now. But thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Dear Mr. Amdok, dear colleagues, on behalf of the Director of the African Center for Statistics, and in particular on behalf of the staff in the, in the center, I would like to also congratulate you on the new move in your professional and, and personal life. I will not be too much uh, talkative like my brother from Southern Burkina. <laughs> I just want to recall that uh, we were privileged to, to have you leading the African Center for Statistics during the interim period of 2015 to 2016. And uh, I will say that we cherished your, your management style, exemplified with a very amiable work ethic. We truly appreciated the support we, we got for, from you. And uh, this lead to now a very well established center with uh, uh, services we are able to, to provide, not only to ECA research policy work, but also to our member state. I would like then to simply wish you all the best in your future career and, and life endeavor whatever they might, they might be. And thank you so much for the support we got from you. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Um, Keizo is DPD. Madam ES colleagues, uh, DES. Um, This is a sad day for our division. I have to get used to this new name, Gender, Poverty, and Social Policy Division. Uh, we are happy for you when you are retiring DES. This is a well-deserved break. But as you go to leave the commission, we are only too mindful that uh, the institutional memory at the top is shrinking. But we know, as staff members and colleagues here, as we sign up uh, for international civil service, this is um, you know, what comes with the territory. Uh, that said, we wish you well on your retirement and your next chapter of your career. The colleagues in the division said to say to you, you are leaving a legacy 
of a service well delivered. They said to thank you for service par excellence. You undertook your duties with the following qualities. Wisdom of Solomon, dedication, humility, and diligence. You led by example, and you set the bar high for a new crop of international civil servants. DES, I'm a product of an African culture where we don't tell people the good things that they have done while they're still alive. <laughs> Most of the time, people will tell a corpse and they choose to tell them the good, thing that they, the good things that they have done. In the social policy division, we are choosing to remember your legacy and we choose to remember the good things that you have done. We know you are human. You have erred like anybody else. But we are choosing, as the staff union here and my colleagues, to remember the legacy that you are leaving behind. We know very well that uh, colleagues around this room have benefited from your interventions. Speaking for myself, I have benefited from your intervention, which was actually done through a friend. But I am here today because you intervened in such a way that peace was restored. And before I conclude, um, so what? I will never forget and I want to thank you on behalf of a friend who on the verge of leaving ECA was really uh, about to paint the whole management with the same brush. But your intervention actually restored her dignity and her confidence because when she left ECA, she thrived uh, to bigger places. And we want to thank you for your quiet diplomacy and uh, for all that you have done for colleagues in this room. We are not saying goodbye, we are saying so long, because I know we are going to interact with you in your next chapter. It would be a pleasure to keep picking your brains. And I am concluding, I want to recall two years ago, <laughs> traveling to Marrakesh via Madrid with you, a few colleagues, and I remember in particular Nasir. So I came into the plane, sat on my seat, and somebody came and whispered and said, do you know who's sitting next to you? And I said, no. And they said, DES Hamdog. I was about to pack my bags and go and look for another seat. And this person said, no, he doesn't bite. And indeed, you did not bite. I remember struggling in Madrid. <laughs> in that big airport in Madrid with you carrying books and carrying documents. And what an enjoyable time we had with you. We will remember your humility, your kindness, and that calmness that would always restore a order when we thought our anxieties were exploding with these numerous reforms. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Keizo. Um, PIKMD, merci. A lot has been said, Mr. Hamdok. Um, and I think for me, I'll, I'll remember two things. One, that you always kept a box of tissue <laughs> in your office for all the difficult times uh, a lot of staff had. And you've always been happy, happily, willingly, and able to figure out at what moment you need to remove that box of tissue. <laughs> but also, I remember you as a very disciplined, deliberate thinker, uh, as someone who is very deliberate on everything you say. And, um, and a lot has been said. I don't want to repeat what has been said, but let me take you back to Sudan, um, to an author you 
probably know very well, Abu Layla Layla. And, um, and read something from her book, Lyrics. And I, from, from, from a poem in which, which is entitled, I am Umdurman, but I will, I will massacre the poem a little bit. I am Hamdok. I am the pearl that adores, adorns my land. I am the one who nurtured you, and for you, my son, my fellow staff members, will ransom myself. I am Hamdok. The Nile watered me and sought my side. I am the one on the western bank, and Gordon's head was my dowry. I am Hamdok. I am this nation. I am the United Nations. I am your tongue and your oasis. Wherever you go, go ahead. Well, thank you, Mercy. We had to stop her because she starts crying after that. So we start. We we try to stay away from having directors talk to you as. Um, SM team members interact with you quite a lot, so we thought it will be, we will do justice to other stuff to have this opportunity to talk to you. But we cannot do justice to your legacy and your contribution to the Commission's work. Um, I will unfortunately have to call some of them. Though not that we don't like SM team members, but <laughs> these days. Um, maybe I will start with Kojo. Is Kojo here? I know you're not an SM team member, but I will. <laughs> You can speak now. <laughs> Madam Executive Secretary, DS Hamdok, uh, I've known you since 2003. You were on my recruitment panel when I joined then Governance Division. And I've known you ever since, even when you left ECA for your surgeon at International Idea. You are known for being Mr. Governance Africa. And that's the legacy I would like to speak to, because we cannot do justice to your legacy without recognizing your unique contribution to African governance, intellectually, institutionally, and even one can say practically in terms of political interventions. Others have spoken about your calmness, your reflective wisdom, and all the other attributes that have made you a successful senior manager in ECA, so I wouldn't dwell on that. But when you look at the African landscape today, when you talk about governance as a sector of program of work, you can only trace it to the work that you, back in 2000 when you joined ECA, you initiated with other colleagues. I recall I was recruited from USAID as a governance officer. Perhaps I was targeted, I'm not sure. But when I came, you had already prepared the grounds for the African governance report at a time when it was not fashionable or conventional for United Nations, the Secretariat for that matter, to be talking about governance, particularly political governance on this continent. But with your calm boldness, you and other colleagues started the assessment of African governance systems, political, economic, corporate, and even social governance. So by 2003, 2004, the first African governance report was ready to be launched on this continent a systematic assessment of governance institutions on this continent, undertaken by Africans themselves. In fact, 
it, it was a watershed moment because for the first time, African institutions, well, if you consider ECA to be African, and most of us think it is, for the first time, undertaking self-assessment of governance progress on this continent and how reforms could be fostered through those self-assessment. The methodology that you instituted with other colleagues has to today become the benchmark for tracking systematic governance systems on our continent, in contrary to conditionalities that were imposed through structural adjustment programs by the IFIs, as well as bilateral donor institutions in the world. So subsequently, NEPAD initiated the African peer review mechanism. And again, it was under your leadership that the peer review methodology was designed to be administered by African local institutions together with civil society, government, the private sector, to self-administer governance assessment, which then became the focus of the African peer review mechanism. I don't think many people are aware, but there is a document that you authored with others, including Ron Hope, and the title is Guidelines for Enhancing Good Economic and Corporate Governance in Africa. I do have a copy on my shelf as we speak, 2002, dated. This document, and I encourage all of you to take a look if you can find a copy, became the foundational document for the declaration of the principles of the African peer review mechanism in Durban in 2002. So, in order not to take too much time, I will simply say we cannot talk about governance on this continent without referencing your enormous intellectual contribution to assessing governance on this continent. You know, there are two kinds of intellectual leadership that one can offer. You can sit in a corner, write books, publish, make a name for yourself, you retire, and you disappear. There's also intellectual leadership through initiatives, strategic thinking, and in many ways creating a movement that will have followers that will come long after you have gone. You have chosen to be an intellectual leader through initiatives, through institution building, such as you have done with governance on this continent. So on that note, I would like to salute you for all the contributions that you've made to the governance of, of this continent, which will continue to live long after you have gone. I know that you are planning to join the private sector, but don't feel guilty <laughs> because you have already done your share of contribution to the public sector on this continent. Fare thee well. God bless. Thank, thank, thank you, Kojo. Uh, Adam? Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, Professor Abdullah, uh, it's difficult, it's hard for me really to stand here and talk about Abdullah because uh, we come from the same area in Sudan, but we only met here in ECA to work together in 2009. We met, I mean, I met him before, but professionally we met here. And I, since I met with Abdullah, really, I've I cannot forget the impact he made and the legacy he is leaving in ECA. Colleagues, we enjoy the work here, the work we do for ECA, when we feel that ECA has a name and ECA is respected. And with Abdullah and other colleagues, I think we found the space to make ECA respectful. I do remember Conference of Ministers 2011 uh, on the role of the state. And we know how the, how the state was weakened in Africa for a long time. And we organized that Conference of Ministers on the role of the state in Africa's 
transformation. And the late Prime Minister Mele Zinawi gave the keynote speech and he referred to our uh, uh, concept note 11 times. 11 times. And he said, this is a document my staff is going to use in office. I also remember the work we have done with President Tabumbiki on illicit financial flows and how we went around the world and we influenced minds in UK, in US, in France, everywhere we went. And then the uh, third international conference on financing for development spoke to the issues we were raising. Our work on industrialization, we are economists. Some time ago, when we talk about industrialization in Africa, they tell you, are you serious? We used to hear this when I was doing my PhD at Glasgow University. I told my supervisor that for the financial system to develop so and so and so, we need capital markets. He said, in Africa, this is like crying for the moon. <laughs> but now we have changed the debate on industrialization in Africa, on the nature of, of industrial policy, and on governance and the role of the state. But I know very well you started with the private sector, and you are going back to the private sector. Abdullah, by the way, started with Deloitte and Touch before moving to IDEA and ADV and coming back. And I also started with the private sector uh, before joining uh, also an international bank, Islamic Development Bank, and coming to ECA. So, and uh, we are all in ECA now embracing the private sector. So we hope that all of you will find a place to join Abdullah sometime. <laughs> and I, before saying I wish you all the best, Abdullah is a very generous person. A lot has been said. He's a diplomat, a top-notch diplomat, and I forgot to say, former, prime, former Minister of Finance of Sudan. <laughs> he, is, he, is, he, is someone who, he is someone who will impress, impress and accept people from different backgrounds. So we have a government that is Islamist, and they, they were very comfortable to appoint him as prime minister and to work hard to convince him to accept the post. Probably one day you will, you will go there. So I wish you the best, Abdullah, and I wish to thank you uh, for the inspiration you provided to this institution, and uh, uh, we will be together. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Surprise. <laughs> I was kind of a uh, traveling uh, inter interplanetary kind of, uh, I mean, uh, traveling here and there, and uh, all of a sudden learned that there is a farewell party here for someone called Abdallah Hamdok. And I said, oh, maybe I should simply drop by, by surprise, without invitation. No, actually, he invited me. <laughs> and uh, for me, I wouldn't say, I think it was Kojo who was saying that uh, he's uh, known Abdallah starting in 2003. Uh, Abdallah and myself, we go a very long way back. Because I've known him since uh, 1997, when we joined the African Development Bank, almost together at the same time, in the same department of policies of the bank as a, a principal policy economist. And we were even at one time sharing the same office. Sharing the same office and also living about 200 meters from each other in our residential area in Abidjan. So we had a pact. Whenever I go on mission, Abdullah would take care of my family. When he goes on mission, I would take care of his family. And uh, by some kind of coincidence, without consulting each other, it so happened 
that we left the bank at the same time to join ECA in 2001. And uh, I used to joke that, uh, you know, we are about uh, quality insurance. We even peer reviewed our designa uh, I mean resignation letters <laughs> sent to the bank. It's so through that uh, peer review mechanism. You know, the African peer review mechanism, it didn't start now. <laughs> we had the principles of good governance and peer review since uh, then. We peer reviewed those letters, uh, we came together at ECA. He went to governance, I went to food security and sustainable development, and uh, we stayed together until he decided to, to leave. He went to IDEA, and we managed to bring him back from IDEA. He stayed until I left, almost six years ago now. Oh, time flies. <laughs> so you can, you can see, <laughs> time flies. But thanks God, we are still standing, and I'm very happy to be here to see you being sent away by so many friends and uh, uh, little sisters. I used to call Ab I used to call Abdallah. I still call him my little Sudanese brother. You know, you know why? I'm from Mali, and do you know how Mali was called during the colonial time? The French Sudan, and he's from the Anglo. Egyptian Sudan. So I'm a Sudanese, he's Sudanese, he's my little brother. So I'm coming to help you send away and congratulate my little brother. And I'm pretty sure that it's a, just a new start, a new, very strong start for him. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Thank, thank you, Josue. Um, thank you, Abdallah, for So we heard about current staff, former staff. There are those who do not feel to be staff because they are not really staff, they're consultants. It's a different category. I just wanted to allow um, Eddie to say just a few words. <laughs> and the spirit of being a consultant, I'm gonna keep it very short, just like our contracts. Uh, they say, I, I was told that I'm, uh, possibly the longest consultant to have worked with uh, Dr. Hamdok. I don't know if that's true with all the vast experience that you have, but uh, with your permission, I'm gonna put it on my CV, if that's okay. Um, I don't know if I'm also the longest consultant, but I know I'm definitely the most fortunate. Uh, most fortunate because I haven't just been lucky enough to work directly with Dr. Hamdok, but I've also worked with people who have worked over the years for him or with him. And uh, I can't count how many times I've heard the words, Dr. Hamdok always says this, um, I learned this from Dr. Hamdok. And that's the kind of wisdom, true wisdom, which can be bought and doesn't just end with one person or with who, was, who received a message from you. It's a wisdom that flows through and through and that goes on to generations. And I pray today that your children and theirs after them will be as fortunate as I have been to work with someone as professional, as humble, and as wise as you. I wish you all the best in your endeavors, and I thank you for everything that you've done for me. We will most probably give you another contract. Um, so we want to conclude this part and uh, allow the ES to say the final word of, of this phase. Madame ES. This is a precious scarf of mine. But I'm gonna do like everybody else. I'm gonna put it on the ground for you. Listen, um, Hamduk, I learned something. I think we met at Governance. Where else? Mo Ibrahim. I was uh, on the board of the Mo Ibrahim Governance Index. That's the first time we met. We were all uh, working on making sure that the index works well. I think we were there in our academic capacities. And we had some really interesting discussions at the time. 
on where governance should go. So I'm not surprised that uh, a lot of where people remember you is on the governance side because that's how I met you. I think uh, as a testament to that, when I came, one of the things that I was told was you have to bring governance back. Adam, I don't know what your new division is called, but I think it has governance in it, which is a continuation and I think a legacy for you because I think it's something that was important and we all believe that it's something that the continent needs to continue. So we hope that as we put that name back into our work of every day, I don't know about APRM, <laughs> you saw that coming. I don't know about APRM, but I'm sure that uh, Adam is going to take this task of putting governance back into where you started it with um, the kind of brilliance that you have left us or you will be leaving us. I must thank you for this, what, 14, 15 months now at ECA because you have been, I think, solid guidance for me as I have worked through the reforms and yes, we will get there. Um, but making sure also that you know we made the right decisions. Your advice was timely. Also, Madam Biha, who is not here today, has been also very helpful. But I think you reached out immediately when this happened, and um, you know welcomed me with open hands. It hasn't been any different. I would remember all the lunches that we had. I think a certain amount of transparency that I want to cherish and treasure as you go away. And um, yes, I sort of came from the private sector and you are going to the private sector. So somewhere in there, there is a lesson. Maybe we should all just go to the private sector. But I think for us to go to the private sector, we need to fix the governance environment. And to fix the governance environment, we need to work with the state. I think I kind of identify with uh, Joe. I don't know about developmental state, but I think we know about good policies, and I think that is something that you have made sure that ECA carries the banner on. So for all your staff that you're leaving, and for everybody who remembers you fondly, I think that all we can say is that we hope that ECA continues to be the place that you try to make it, a place that is sincere, a place that is honest, a place that carries itself as family, and hopefully, a place that works to change Africa for the better. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Madam. Um, so, this concludes this phase. Uh, we wish now to give you a few gifts, and one among them is to also, actually, we got a coat from someone who likes you very much. We understand you're Sudanese, I, Zimbabwean, uh, but you, <laughs> your repatriation ticket is taking you back to South Africa. So this is what Tabo Mbeki uh, say to say to you. It's never farewell for an African patriot like you. you will see, we will see you when the sun rises tomorrow still at work for the realization of Africa's renaissance. Thank you, Abdallah, for steering the work of the high-level panel on illicit financial flows from Africa from inception. The members, partners, and support staff of the panel send their good wishes to you as you begin another journey. Tabum Beki. And of course, um, We gathered a number of pictures in addition to a few gifts that we will just avoid to unwrap and we'll just turn them around and we'll ask you to walk uh, right back. Oh, there is the cake too. No, you can walk this way. It seems that this picture 
uh, Mr. Hamdok had it painted in 2006. He forgot to pay for it. 2016. 2016. He forgot to pay for it. We are able to trace the artist and to get it back, to retrieve it for him. Some of these are no longer on our website, they were on the former website. So we went and combed those, so we will give them to you to go, to go with those, and we will keep them in our hearts, all those memories. Sorry. Uh, no, you can stand here, you know. <laughs> we like you here too. Um, so these are, we taught, um, your, uh, just a synopsis, a summary of what you have been through in this commission since you went there, but I think it would be fair for me to allow Aida to, to, to walk us through uh, his uh, professional journey in ECA before we get to the case. <laughs> Dear brother, my dear boss, my dear friend, Abdallah, how do you walk through a man such as Abdallah's life? A man of great nobility, but of immense humility. That is not very easy to achieve as a leader, trust me. Um, He's been an economist, he's been a senior analyst, he's been an author, over 30 years of experience. I remember when he used to sit on the think tank group of former Prime Minister, the late Prime Minister Meles. I think uh, de development thinkers, as it, as, as it were, and Joe didn't quite like that word. But as you all know, Prime Minister Meles and President Zimbeki were very great exponents of the developmental state. And uh, I know that Abdallah was very much part of the group that Prime Minister Meles had this group of high-ranking African intellectuals that would come and meet with him to brainstorm on, on, on various aspects of development. And he was very much part of that. Um, Abdallah was actually, uh, uh, Josue talked about the fact that they both left the ADB. But what he didn't say was that they were both poached from the ADB by uh, the former executive secretary, Dr. Mwako, when he joined ECA. And he was very keen to bring in new blood into the institution. So Abdallah and Josue were one of the people that were poached. Um, and then, of course, once he was poached, he was poached by idea and then left ECA, but not without leaving his mark, as, as Kojo has said. Everybody knows that you're the father of modern governance thinking in Africa. And not just modern governance thinking, but governance in the service of Africa's development. And that has to be clear. And I think the discourse and the narrative of governance, not just good governance, but how governance promotes the development process this is how you will be remembered. Then, of course, when uh, Mr. Abdelaijani came back, he poached you from idea. So you're a man who has been poached several times, uh, but still standing. And um, he poached you uh, in his reform, where you came back and you led the NEPAD and Regional Integration Division, um, where Joe again referred to as, as, as um, the work of the CFTA actually began. And we thank you for that conceptualization and your great work on, on assessing, gov the, assessing government's report, which is the AGR, 
which caused a lot of consternation and aggro amongst African countries, including Ethiopia, in terms of the findings. But this was the report that linked economic development um, with, with um, uh, 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 the, the process of governance. And of course, we know you as the father of, of governance, but we also know you as the father of IFFs in Africa. I remember the com, the, the com that we had in Malawi, I think 2003, I think Josue was there. We, this was held in Lilongwe under the invitation of uh, the then president Mutarika, where we had a side event with the Norwegian Minister for International Development Cooperation. And this was how Abdallah introduced the need for IFFs. And immediately, in Lilongwe, the ministers brought about a resolution that ECA and AUC should lead on looking at how IFFs can make a difference in Africa's development financing, and which led to the creation of the Mbeki panel. And of course, as they say, the rest is history. Um, that legacy uh, was quite fortuitous, and I, was, I, was, I, I, I always remember that meeting with great um, uh, 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 clarity, because I think that was an inflection point um, uh, for this. And as Adam said, the IFFs have taken you all over the world, including Obama's White House, I might add. And you've met all the leaders that need be. But what I particularly respect is the respect that President Mbeki gives you till this day. That he will call you and you will discuss for quite some time. And President Mbeki is not somebody who has that much time. But he will talk about the current trends in IFS, what we need to do, the planning process, his involvement with um, talking to member states on an, a regular basis, and all this while he never, ever moves without your counsel. And I think that's a great uh, achievement and the respect that he has for you. So I think that your legacy in pioneering this program will ace beyond ECA. There is no IFF event that is held here in Africa where ECA, and you in particular, um, is, uh, is not invited. We now have, as a result of your work, a very, very active and prolific African civil society group on IFF. The Stop the Bleeding campaign comes to mind. Under your leadership, we've created the IFF Consortium, which is the panel reinventing itself into the consortium, currently chaired by President Mbeki. And we have the IFF Working Group, which is a subcommittee. And these institutions that form the consortium and the working group will go on and implement the Mbeki panel, irrespective of whether ECA is with them or not. It is the Mbeki panel recommendations is part of their work program that they are rolling out. So for me, you're leaving with a great legacy, a legacy that you should be very, very proud of, and a legacy that we are very proud of. And so for me, I know that for us, it's not farewell. But before, before I, I, I close, a few, some members of staff have been coming to me, and they say, if you get the chance to speak and say things about Mr. Hamdok, please can you say this? And so I started jotting down the things that they said. And I am encapsulating each statement with a word or two. And it goes like this. Some of them said, he's a true Africanist, a great listener, a very vital quality for a leader, an optimist, a father, a counselor, welcoming, of course, remember the tissues, has time, has time for little people like us. A trusted friend, supportive, humble, respectful, which is what makes him very likable, and a gentle and kind-hearted individual. We will miss him dearly. I didn't want to read this, 
but I just felt that um, some of the people are here and if I didn't, they will come and grab me in the corridor and say, why didn't you uh, say that? But my final point, my dear brother, is that how is a socialist and one of the last living left-wingers, uh, how, how you've managed to navigate the world of public service, which is okay as a socialist, with the private sector, and, and then you're going back to the private sector. I think that it's time for you to do a seminal essay on being a socialist working in a capitalist environment. I wish you well, my dear brother. Thank you. Mr. Hamda, it's your turn to say goodbye. Thank you, Aida. We live in the world of socialist market economy. <laughs> Dear friends, colleagues, Vera and all the friends, I can't believe it is my turn. I stood in this place for the last 10 years so many times. You will never think that day will come. It's always sending one colleague away, but you think yours is down the line, maybe in the next 100 years or so. You'll never get to that line. It sounds, it was like just yesterday. But I think I am one of the very few privileged Africans who had the opportunity to serve in this great institution twice. I came here with my dear friend, and I'm very happy, Josue, you are here. We came together from ADB, he left us and I left also and came back in 2008. I think ECA, as we all brag about it, is the oldest Pan-African institution. We were proud of playing a role of midwifery, if you could call it that way, of giving bears for uh, OAU, the current AU, the African Development Bank, and so many others, as you know. It was not by chance our tall order and distinguished longest service executive secretary, the late Professor Adidiji, was nicknamed the father of ECOS. This Africa journey on regional integration, trade, and all that, it is actually a journey of ECI. And I'm very glad, Vera, this year we are going to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the uh, establishment of ECI. It's a tall order. I've always been proud of being part of so many initiatives of this institution. I don't want, and I think it is not for me, to uh, talk about what we did together. But I want to say one thing. If there was any achievement that could carry my name, I've never done it on my own. There's always been collective work. We work together to achieve those milestones. And I believe firmly in collective thinking. I think collective thinking is superior to any individual thinking. And I guess this is the spirit that makes this institution great. And I hope and I'm sure this will carry on in the, in the future. As I uh, leave ECA, I think if there is one or two things that, as, as, I mean, I heard this word, what, what they call it, uh, lesson learned or best practices, or some colleagues call some of the gadgets we, 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 we we craft uh, toolkits and all this. It's, it's a very simplistic way of addressing complex phenomena of development and, and all that. But I think as long as we continue to be relevant to the African development agenda and responding to Africa development issues and challenges, this institution will prevail. Where I am absolutely sure when the, the UN is defining the future of the economic commissions in the world, the savior of the rest of the four commissions will be the ECA. Because if there is relevance of development in the world, it is here in Africa. And it is the way we are integrated with our sister institutions, whether it's the African Union Commission or the African Development Bank, as long as we work with them together, defining and working together on Africa development issue, this will save the other commissions. Believe me, if not for that, there is a huge, and you know it so well, encroachment on the commissions, defining their roles, and there are some corners even calling for their abolishment. 
But having ECA will carry the day and will be the institution that will save the others. I don't want to speak long, really. And also, I don't want to venture in mentioning the big and small things we did together. I am absolutely sure with all of you, I have that story, whether on a mission, on writing a paper, a, uh, a conflict, a quarrel on a deadline that was not met, and all that. But this is what makes the whole journey uh, worth living. If I cherish one thing, leaving ECA, is this huge recognition we got from colleagues, friends, but from the continent at large, from what we are doing here. And I think that is probably the biggest trophy one can carry in life. I wish this great institution all the success in its future endeavors and all that. I'm absolutely sure this will be the destiny for this institution. And thank you so much. I was actually speechless. This is overwhelming. I'm, I'm really, I mean, I didn't expect this. I was debating with Aida, Suad, and uh, uh, Rebecca. But, you know, look, I probably, I have uh, still links to Ethiopia. Most of you know that. And um, I would be coming back or be staying here and all that. So why, why farewell? They said, no, no, this is not about where you are going or staying. Give us that opportunity. I reluctantly, I said, okay, let us have, I was thinking maybe a cup of tea in the corridor of the ninth floor, but not this. It's really our one. Thank you so much for all of you who did this. But it would be remiss from me as a Sudanese, not to mention living in Ethiopia. This is home for me. That's why I think I came second time round. Ethiopia is a place where I spend the longest professional life, even Sudan including. Stayed here 13 years and probably it is increasing. I like this place. Of course, my only problem and challenge when I go into supermarkets, people speak to me in Amharic. <laughs> I reply in English, Amharic English. Some of them get very angry. The whole interpretation, they think maybe this Habasha is very proud of himself. <laughs> Coming from the US, doesn't want to speak the language. And in some, uh, maybe uh, months back, they will think I'm an Eritrean who doesn't want to speak Amharic. <laughs> but when I say, look, I am from west of Gondor, some they get it, say, but some they said, but why don't you speak the language? I said, but just go further west. <laughs> when I say Sudan, of course, uh, they embrace me. And this is, this is one, one nation, and I like it so much. And I think today, Ethiopians, not only in this region, the Horn, but in the entire continent, you live in very exciting times. First time in the history of this nation to have gender parity in the cabinet and to go on to have the first female president, this is a tall order. You should be very proud of that. And it will open the way to great things that come. Of course, in history, you gave Africa the Queen of Sheba. Well, it's not new to you. It is in, in the DNA, I think. Thank you so much, friends and colleagues. I can assure you, yes, I'm going to the private sector where I started my international career after finishing the studies in UK. But uh, believe me, this is going there with also, I will never leave that, the DNA either of the uh, socialist market economy is there. It's, it's running in the blood. Even when we do this, we do it with not, not the social corporate responsibility, which is, I think it is very much superficial, but looking at it in uh, probably the workers have interest in the firms and all that, maybe. But thank you so much. I really appreciate this, and I hope our definitely passes will cross. I will be around. You can always uh, count on that. And I hope also I will do likewise, uh, counting on your support and your help and all that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So there is an opportunity for a group of photo by the stairs or pictures only with Hamdok. Uh, there are a number of photographers and then a cocktail. So thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Yes, the cake too. You can have the cake. I think we can fall.
Yeah. 